Today's video is sponsored by Speaker Workshop. If you have a valuable speaker suffering from a damaged cone, rubbing, or burned voice coil, contact Speaker Workshop. Many classic amp circuits were designed in voice with particular speakers in mind, and replacing speakers in some classic vintage amps can severely diminish the resale value and make the amp not sound as intended. Preserve the value and tone of your classic amplifier. Have its original speaker reconed at Speaker Workshop. All right, so this is my buddy Danny. Say hi, Danny. Hey, guys. So Danny owns the little uh, uh, champ that I did on the channel a while back. I, I guess it's been a few weeks now, hadn't it? It's been a little bit since yeah. we got the speaker back. I had to send the speaker off because the speaker was a bit weak. It, his is this one on this side. And I had another fellow who saw that video and brought me this one. This is a 59. So I think yours was a, what, a 64? I think it's a 62. 62, excuse me. Um, I went ahead and... Um, did a couple other things to yours. I, I uh, the handle, I um, put some conditioner, leather conditioner on it, and let it soak in real nice. And so it's nice and supple now, nice. and it's a little less cracking. Um, I also took some shoe polish and and polished it up a bit for you. Yeah, that that chassis looks really good. Yeah, the chassis too. Mm -hmm. But you can see how the handles get after a little while. They get really crusty right. and crack. They all use a crack over here. But also uh, your tube chart. I hate picking them up by the handle, but yours is in good, really good shape. Uh, your tube chart was coming loose, okay. and I glued it back down for you. Cool. Appreciate it. So that's all better. Uh, and it sounds great. I'd like for you to plug it in and try it if that's yep. cool. All right. Sure. But this is what he's brought this one of the speakers has a tear in it is it the one with the tear on the yep. grill all right so unfortunately something yeah, got a hold of it and i don't know how it happened but i think i honestly think this could be like you take this grill cloth off um like my wife is a seamstress she could she could sew that and i'm sure there are others who could do it maybe even almost invisibly right um it it wouldn't entirely go away but it could you know be hard to spot maybe yeah. from a few feet another guy i've talked to that that has one of these he actually has like the one that's three serial numbers before me he had the same kind of tear and, and he patched it up really nicely to where it's pretty much invisible so i'm hoping i don't have to take the grill cloth off i don't know how big of a process that would be but i'm sure it's stapled right um uh yeah, probably on the back side yeah. i don't know how this is put together though on the uh on the baffle yeah is right. the baffle is it a separate piece or is it it is it's got screws oh okay so, so the baffle will come out um but you have to take you have to take the chassis and everything out of it right uh which isn't that big of a deal you get yeah well, I what think, they did there well they, they these normally had handles on the side as well oh yeah, that's right uh-huh so that's i think right. someone just didn't want them and, and patched them with these little pieces of tolex there um yeah, I was over at my buddy Steve's uh, place not long ago. He's got a little Marshall. It's it's a little later than this, um, but it has those side handles like you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. But, okay, uh, we're going to attempt to fix this speaker with some hot glue. I just uh, I just told Danny, I said, well, we'll do our best. I can't make any guarantees on it, but we'll see what we can For do sure. with it. it. It looks it looks a lot worse than yeah. I kind of expected, to be honest. So... Maybe it'll take, maybe it won't. This would be about the worst one I've attempted to do with hot glue. Sure. But we'll pull it out and see what we can do with it. Yeah, worst case scenario, I just have to get a recone, so I'm yeah. too worried about it. Okay, so these speakers are Celestion G12 T731 model. Is that what that is? Or model or a... Uh -huh interesting yeah I, I mean it's cool for me to see something like this because usually don't uh don't get early european stuff you know and around here too much right interesting i was talking to him about these tube retainers with the asbestos caps on there like woven asbestos <laughs> that's what's flopping there it looks like a big uh nest of some kind interesting yeah it came out of the studio in rochester new york apparently that had been there been sitting in the studio since the 60s 
So I'm guessing this hole's also been here for a long time too, because I can see where someone tried to tape it up, the grill cloth at one point. Or maybe uh -huh. the grill cloth was just ripped and something got in there and ripped the speaker. I don't know, but... Because there's this piece of tape here. Well, that is what you would have to do. You would have to, um, you would have to back it, mm -hmm. support, you know, behind it. Um, there's, they actually make cloth stuff for fabric that's that's oh, okay. flexible that go it's a medium it goes on the back and will hold two ripped pieces together like that gotcha. and you kind of heat it up and it has like an adhesive infused in it you kind of heat it up and it would hold the two pieces together so you might not have to actually visibly sew it but it probably would reinforce it with some like clear uh they make clear thread right essentially that's like a polymer huh that you you could do it and it would be almost invisible okay the big reveal we'll see how bad it is get a good shot of it yeah it's a pretty good size puncture I, I think we can do something with it though but it looks it's got the uh, there's your date code for the speaker oh, yeah, on the was that say 1967 or what does that say 64 64 excuse me Yeah, that was cool stuff. The original foot switch here. Yeah, yeah, I noticed that. That's that's. Uh, I've never seen one of those either. Yeah, not in person. Okay. Like I said, this is this will be the biggest rip I've ever attempted to repair. Usually, they're more like they're more like this. Right. Uh, you know, a little bit more subtle, and and it's and they, it works really nice when they're like that. This. You'll have to tell me how it goes, because I don't, yeah. you know what I mean? I don't know. If it holds up, then uh, then I'll know for the future. How long do you think we should let it dry before I test it? Oh, it goes pretty instantly. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. Uh, we could test it out here. Yeah, okay. Well, I mean, for longevity, you know what I mean? Like. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I just don't know. I mean, ideally, at this point... It is nice to keep the original cone if somebody wants the original cone. I might need a second. No, maybe not. I was going to say I might need a second hand, but I think I can get it. Okay. But if I did have to get a recone, people, you can save those gaskets, right? So the date code would be on there? Yes. Okay. Correct. Okay, so we're starting the furthest here on the edge of the crack. The great thing about, uh, and this is what I tell everybody about this, because everybody's got their own kind of ideas, oh, it needs to be done like this or like that. Um, I've always used this hot glue because it's really flexible, and the cool thing is you can always remelt it. Like if you put too much on or something, you can remelt it and get it off of there, or you can remelt it and spread it, or you can, you know what I mean? So it's yeah. like, all you got to do is put the tip of this on, and it won't catch that on fire or anything. Right. It's just, you know. You don't leave it in one spot for very long. But you just want to kind of bridge far enough across the crack that it won't crack again, hopefully, you know. Yeah, with a rip this big, it'll be it'll be really interesting to see how uh, how it holds up. The thing is, it's like this whole area now is you know, somewhat weakened by the blow, so it's, you know. Yeah, it may not rip where the glue is, but around it or something. Right, exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah, and like down the middle of this part or mm -hmm. something, you know, because of the stress. Yeah. I just, I'm also, um, curious as to whether or not this is gonna uh, the voice coil is gonna rub after this repair because there may be slightly more stress or something in this area as mm -hmm. opposed to like the opposing side so I don't know if it'll warp the basket enough to rub yeah. the voice coil or on a, on a repair with this big I just don't know it's worth a shot so. it, definitely I think so I think so too on an amp like this it's worth a shot 
And they make a rubber cement stuff that's specifically designed supposedly for speakers. But it's virtually like the same, it's the same kind of consistency. Yeah, the, and, the guy that owns the other blues breaker close to mine, it's just some kind of flex, flex glue. Mm -hmm. I forgot exactly what it was called, but when I talked to you, you said this works, so I'll go with that. This, the thing about that stuff is it's a once and done. Yeah. And there's no way to undo it. There's right. no way to spread the stuff or heat it. You can't heat it up and move it around and reflow yeah. it. Uh, that's why I love this because if you if you fuck up or if it breaks again, if it cracks again, you can come back in here and. Yeah, I never realized you could do that with rubber smoke. Yep. Or hot glue. I mean. yeah, the hot glue, yeah. Yeah. This is the this is the tough bit right here because the way that this was yeah it was like a V rip yeah yeah the way that this right here um, was ripped it's gonna it's got to be you know it's got to be flattened just right yeah Yeah, I've had a few Marshall guys tell me, like, you know, these aren't the original speakers that would have came in there, because I think the other ones are T. Uh, they're very similar. These are just, like, the Selmer ones that, the ones that Selmer used. Uh -huh. um, but I know, like, they pretty much just use whatever they could get, so maybe... maybe they, you and, can't say anything about this yeah. early. Yeah, and the date you codes are, are perfect. I mean, July 64. Yeah. This is probably an early 65 amp. Yep. Um, but clearly shenanigans happen, you know, people try to restore things and maybe, but I don't think so. Yeah. I don't, I'm kind of with you. I so either. I mean, with the originality of the rest of the amp, I mean, the filter caps have been cha changed, but I mean, even the speaker jack is exactly the same as the guys three before me. The only, uh, the only tip off I would say that from what I can see is, is just the, is the hardware. The hardware was mismatched. Oh, was it on on this speaker? Yes. Yeah. See, see this. Well, that is a big. They had this off. hardware. Yeah. And this hardware. Oh. So I don't. Hmm. Very possible though. You know. That yeah, that's kind of more. Makes it more questionable. I'm just not an early Marshall expert. I mean, I. Oh, I'm. Yeah, I just, I know I'm just no historian on Marshall stuff. I I enjoy learning about it. Yeah. Obviously, but. Uh, now, honestly, when I bought this, I was you know. 80% sure it was going to be a you know one of those lash ups for Music Ground. I don't know if you ever heard of those guys, but Music Go Round. Music Ground. There was this uh, music store. They still have a place called uh, London Denmark Street Vintage or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but they got caught back in the 90s making fake Marshalls out of old Marshall parts. Oh right. Yeah, and so they got in a bunch of trouble then. And all the Marshall guys always talk about you know music ground and stay away from them. So I thought it was going to be one of those because they tend to make the rarest marshals in like custom color Tolexes. Right. And they're always like super clean, which is one thing I, you know, I, this has some wear and tear, so it made me think like maybe it is original. But then I, you know, I, I talked to some martial experts and they told me it's pretty much all straight. Yeah, I think most stuff like that, it really doesn't stand up under close examination. If yeah. you, you know, if you know the history of the stuff and you know, and you've seen enough of them. Right. Um, and the Marshall guys are probably the most knowledgeable experts oh, of God, any. Yeah. <laughs> Just, yeah, real, real persnickety. <laughs> yeah, very. <laughs> no doubt. Yeah, you can see how it's coming along. Uh, and, and this stuff dries, like I said, pretty much immediately. But see, oh, yeah, the, the problem is, uh, see how this area kind of, uh -huh. it's still it's flexible so because it's, it's so large. Um, and, and you won't, I mean, it's, it's more noticeable because you can kind of see it. It's reflective here, but right. um, it doesn't move the same way in any other part of the cone. So I'm, uh, this is the part that bothers me right here. Um, this little this little area because it's it's flexed yeah and it's weakened right there because it's been bent obviously like in half at one point so 
I'm trying my best to like flatten it. You know, the more you try to flatten it too, the weaker are probably making it. Would it be an issue just like reinforce that whole area? Well, I'm gonna do it on the back as well. Oh, that's right. So I, the, the, once I get enough on here on the top, I'll. And I'm I'm gonna go across this bit actually. Uh, the fold, even though there's not a crack right there, mm -hmm. I'm gonna try to heat that and smooth it. And yeah, I'll just put a layer of this on top. That way, it'll kind of infuse with the cone material. And like you said, maybe reinforce it. But see what I mean? It's like right now I'm not squeezing any in. I'm just spreading what was already there. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to make it as thin as possible. And I don't know. I just I've been doing this a while like this, and I brought a lot of speakers back to life like this. Just none this badly damaged yet. There's a place where three pieces come together. So you got like a V, you know, yeah. uh, and then an, another V on the other side. So you've got like th three pieces that are going different directions that you got to get all back in one piece. Yeah, this will be really interesting to see if this holds. I, I really hope it does for you. I really hope the whole amp fires up without any problems. It's been sitting in my room for a year now. Have you had it looked at at all? No, but yeah, it, it all looks fine. I don't see any, and it, the, like I said, the electrolytics have been replaced, so. They have, okay, yeah. so at least, okay. Anything this old or, or valuable, I'm, just, I'm really loath to fire up unless it's been, <laughs> unless it's been looked at. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, I mean it's it's together. It's together. Yeah. Looks good. I'm gonna do the uh, the back of it as well here. Reinforce this from behind. Want me to hold it? Uh, that might not hurt. Well, I, I don't I don't know that you would you might be in the way actually. Okay. Let me uh let me see what I can do here. I got it. The, here's the repair on this side. I can't do anything in a mirror, can I? So I got most of it from that side, and I got all of it from this side. I'm just going to go over this area one more time right here. Yeah, you should get you a hot glue gun if you ever come up against this again. It's not hard, it just takes time, but yeah, you can see how I'm doing it. Yeah, exactly. Since, yeah. Yeah, definitely will grab one. And for smaller repairs or, you know, little cracks along the edge you get all the time, like, is that one right there? No. But you know what I mean? Like you get these yeah, little cracks or little punctures yeah. on the edge a lot. Yep. Um, it's great for that. Okay, well, I'm happy with that. About as happy as I guess I could be. What do you reckon? Yeah, it looks solid to me. Yeah. We'll let it cool down just a little bit. It, it only takes a couple minutes. So by the time we get it in there, it'll be cool enough, I think, to try it. If you want to try it. Yeah, let's try it. Do you I want to pull to the back off and just double check on them? I'm, I'm fairly uh, sure the... Yeah, why not? Yeah, go ahead and... I would love to look in it anyway. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, that's the positive end. So they've 
they have uh, left the original sprig in, but they've also left it in circuit, and they're using the original tie point. I would not recommend that. This thing, this thing deserves better, honestly. There was a can here probably originally, I'm guessing, mm -hmm. and it, this is a replacement for that can, and that's fine. Um, but on the sprig, I mean, they've just done that the wrong way from yeah. what I would have done it. I'd have, to, I'd have to look at the schematic and see exactly uh, what they were trying to accomplish there. But um, it's possible that that spray cap could just be restuffed. You basically just hollow it out and stick a new cap in inside of that cap. Yeah. Can. Right. So it would have yeah. it would have the appearance of originality from the outside. And then you could just, again, you know, stuff like that, just make a note of what's been done. You know, mm -hmm. original Capri stuff, blah, blah, blah. Nobody cares about that. Not not in my experience. Even the Marshall guy, I mean, they'd rather have a cap that's working, you know, sure. than, than have one that's uh, that's not. Okay. But, yeah, all these Hunts caps are all original. Looks like they replaced a couple caps there. Somebody's done some work over here. On the foot side. Is that what that is? This is the foot switch. Yeah, yeah it foot is switch. the foot switch. So there's a little transistor, I guess, in the foot in the switching. I guess that's the switching. I don't know. Are they using that as a as diode? Is that a diode? Because I don't see. Well, no, there's a diode there. This transistor here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't. I was getting. I hmm. wasn't sure if they were using that as a diode or or what. I'd have to. Again, this would take a minute to. Right. I've never been inside of one of these, so to me it's a novelty. Whatever cap that is, that's English, so I, that's probably, probably oh, original. Oh, yeah, RS, yeah, radio probably spares. Original. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Most of these solder joints look original. Yeah, this is all, they've, they've left most of it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't see anything egregious, and it's not. It, it, there's nothing burned or anything like that. So I, man, I yeah, I think you've got a, you got a gem here, dude. Yeah, that's cool. Let's fire it up. Yeah, definitely. Oh, this the pot's speaker. been replaced, of course. Which one? Oh yeah, I see it. Mm -hmm. yeah, I see now. Do those have date codes on them? Or I can't see any. They might be on the bottom side. I don't see any on the back. <sighs> no, they're probably on the bottom side. Yeah, all the original mustard caps. I mean, that's that's what most people care about is like the signal caps. Yeah. Um, they all have day codes on them, don't they? I just don't know how to read those. Uh, some do, and most signal caps do not. Oh, okay. Uh, most of the um, electrolytics will have date codes. Uh -huh. At least the American stuff, but I don't. I don't have enough experience with uh, the the English, the British stuff to know. Right. I really don't. I'll be the first to admit that. Yeah, one switch replaced here. That's why it's such a, it's a cool novelty for me. I like the way they've got this in here too. It's yeah. Actually, kind of reinforces all all this. And, you know, stiffens it. Well, that's one thing a collector told me is that he said it looks like the chassis has been in a different amp because it has these. Good point. Yeah, which I you know. But then again, you know, this is another thing too. This early. They were still fucking around with stuff. I know, yeah. This know. chassis could have been intended for something completely different. Right. Um, and they just made it work with this to yeah. get some orders out. You know what I mean? You can't go by a lot... Of, on early stuff, man, for any company almost, you can't go by. Right. Yeah, I know, like Fender. 100%. Never, yeah. Never tossed anything. Are they even in a factory yet, really? Or are they no, still doing... No, they building in the back of the shop. Building in the back of the shop. Yeah, yeah, they're still in the shop, so... Yeah, dude, I wouldn't go buy any of that. Yeah, I would be a happy camper on this, man. Are you, is this one you're going to keep? Or? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've had it for years. So. Never plan on selling this, and I don't think I'll ever sell that Super Mint 57 basement I have either. It's just so hard having, like, super clean stuff because I don't want to be the person to fuck it up, you know? Yeah. Plus, the super clean stuff is the stuff that will bring the most money and you know in the back of your mind it's like you know what i could sell this one for the top dollar and then get myself one that i'd be happy with that has a few blemishes you know yeah let the collectors have the really super clean stuff that's you what know? i've been pondering you know thinking about doing but like i said the basement needs a recap i just don't want to do it because it's entirely 
100% stock, and untouched everything. And I know there's some collector out there that probably doesn't play guitar, they just want it to be 100% stock. Yeah, but so, you know, well, you run into that, and it's, At least on my channel. I mean, I get it when you're a buyer and seller because that's what I did that for a long time too. You know, so I get your predicament for sure. You limit your market as soon as you fix something. But at the same time, if you're in my position, you at least have a way to show exactly what's been done right. to something. You know, I could go on and say, hey, this is what this is. This is what was replaced, and here's why. You know, if you get one that that has all these original caps, you're probably going to be getting something that's just going to be a shelf museum piece and not a play, you know, you're going to be able to play the son of a bitch. Sweet. Well, it's fired up, man. Cool. Uh, we got to throw these tubes in it. That's the problem. When they shipped it to me, they didn't mark which tubes go where, which should be a huge deal, right? There's one of the KT-66s. And those are the original Genelex. You can see why they had to have these giant retainers. <laughs> these dudes. This one has the Genelex sticker. Yeah, the, the tubes alone, dude. I mean, yeah. dude, these are stupid, stupid. I know, yeah. I was looking at those. Oh, I didn't even know they had the two retainers in there. I didn't know these tender style two retainers. Oh, why'd you got them? What time's it missing? Oh, that's what that was. That's what that was. That is a... I'm not gonna put it in now, but that yep. that goes inside of the little basket weave on one of these. Oh, okay. Gotcha. I think they used to be like a complete circle, mm -hmm. and and they were solid, but they've cracked. Yeah, I see. Apart, so. So I'm guessing this one's the rectifier, then, right? No, that's it's not. the thing. Or is it? Yes, that's the rectifier. Okay, so there's your rectifier. I thought you were pointing somewhere else. That that the this other little tube I think is a. Uh, Tremolo tube. Okay. Because I'm, I'm guessing they probably changed the tremolo tube to this solid tech there. Correct. That, that's the only one. Yeah. Because that doesn't matter. It's, all it's got to do is oscillate. That's what I told exactly. Phil the other day on that guild amp um, that I serviced. I said, hey, you've got a really nice old Amperex tube in the tremolo yeah. on this amp. I said, you should put a JJ or something crappy in there and save that for a preamp. Yep, you know, for sure. When one of your preamp tubes goes out. But there is also, one of them is an electroharmonics, the other two are mullards. <clears throat> well, I'll put this one in the phase inverter. Yeah, there you go. Always put your crappiest tubes downstream. Put your best stuff up front. See it. Oh, Muller, I don't know if we're going to be able to glean much from it as far as date or anything. I, oh, yeah, yeah, there's a date code on it. These are kind of, I have to look these up. This is, again, not something I do every day, so. Muller codes? Yeah. Huh. Yeah, I, don't, I just don't know enough without looking them up. It's always cool to see this stuff though. Do you happen to remember what that code said? Don't worry about it. Which one? The Muller. This one says B3K1. B3. Looks like February 63. Uh, this one is B3G4. But yeah, 63, K4, November 63, fourth week of November. All right, so those could be original. All right, I 
guess give her some fire, man. See what. Okay. Uh, I don't know which one's which. There we go. Stand by. Yeah, we'll, we'll take it off. Stand by. Right. We got power. And we got tube glow. Yep, we got filaments. Yep, got rectifier filament. These are the ones I was worried about. Whether you can't see shit. There's one. Yeah, I see a filament. Okay, I see two filaments. I think we're. I think we're good. I think we're good. Okay, kick her um off of standby. See if we get any hiss. Check, check, check. Oh, let me turn down the volume. They're all on ten. Was it on 10? Yeah, so that's pretty good <laughs> if it wasn't making that much noise. Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah. Well, let's see if she survives, man. I mean, the like I said, the, the good thing about this kind of repair is that you can redo it. You know, this the other speaker stuff, you kind of get one shot at it, and if it fails after that, you're probably screwed because it's you can't get it off there or really spread it around. Uh-huh. At, at least I know no way of do, how, you know, doing it like you can with this stuff, so... Yeah, let's set it up, man. Put a right. guitar in it. This is going to be cool. We'll get to piss my neighbors off. Yeah, I'll let you use this feature. I know they hate me now, man. I got a drum set. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And they're they're being really nice about it, but I know they're, they are they got to be pissed. Here, you go for it. I can play the amp anytime I want when I get home. Oh, yeah, dude. So what do you say this is? This is a, a Glenn Miller uh, a replica of the Futura, which is the prototype of the Explorer they did. Wow. But yeah, it's all Carina, and then I've got the Carina Flying V over here too, and it's really cool because it's like five and a half pounds. Dude, that's cool. Yeah. I just happen to have it with me, so. So they. This kind of limited edition sort of thing. Um, I mean, he was apparently commissioned or given the blessing from Gibson to make these. So they he got a stockpile of old Gibson parts from the 80s when they made the, the Heritage Series ones. Uh huh. And Gibson told him he could make these and use their stuff. Uh, so he made them for like eight years. to about six a little over halfway and I'll push the loudness to about six on this channel and if it holds up at that I mean it's we might be able to that's cabinet that's not 
that speaker. What's the point of having a Marshall yeah, almost right. at a certain stage? <laughs> yeah, well, everything I'm hearing is cabinet rattle from okay. here. Like this is rattling, and then there's, you know, maybe this back door. Yeah. I don't hear anything on the speaker. See what kind of um, cleaner tones I can get for with you. Intensity. It's yeah. uh, it's see, oh. it's stealing away signal. So it's trying to do something, but it, it's not. It's okay. not oscillating. Yeah, it, there's a problem in your tremolo. Huh? It's not like an opto resistor or anything, is it? No, okay. no. This was. Thank you. 
case. You're yeah. even you're rattling these these little trim uh -huh. pieces, but you're not rat the speakers hold, man. Should you're I gonna pull be fine. Them off and tighten them. I mean, it's not a big deal. I don't really. It care. wouldn't hurt. Yeah. It wouldn't hurt. But I'm just saying, if it's if it's enough to rattle that, you know, and it's not fucking up on this speaker cone, then I think you're gonna hold. Of something and stick between the plexi and the uh, and and the uh, the actual chassis. Yeah. You know, just put a couple of shims in there. Okay. And that'll keep that from rattling like cool. that. The little things like that. Just if you're recording, you know, yeah. <laughs> just mess the sounds. That sounds great. Man. Yeah, it does. That sounds fantastic. Tempted to, uh, I'm bridge tempted on. to bridge. <laughs> yeah, let's Here, do it. Bridge them and you do. That's the, right. that's the crunch tone. Yeah, I feel how light this thing is. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> Dude. It's crazy. Oh, that's, that's freaking sweet. Yeah, someone put a 70s tar back in the neck pickup on that. Which are my favorite pickups, but I love them. Do you really? I uh, absolutely love that's one of that's some of my favorite pickups. Wow, okay. For uh for overdrive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you're not you know, I'm not overdrive. You're not guy. the overdrive guy, so. But yeah, for overdrive tones, they're awesome. They're fossil even. <laughs>
But well, you were just playing? Just a, some. Uh, play it again. Play that one more time. <laughs> It's a uh, chord progression sounding right. Yeah, that's what it is. Here, it's but... a Silver Sun pickups. I can't. Yeah. Th Good stuff, though. I appreciate Good stuff. it. And it brings out the best in the stamp, I think. I, honestly, I mean, as much as this thing rocks and has that reputation, yeah. I think it just has a real nice, clear, clean sound. Yeah. The clean tones. Amazing. The, cool, the other cool thing about um, reaching the channels, too, is that you can... Um, you can mix in because this is a little more of a trebly channel. You can get on that verge of breakup and do your do some more of your jazzy stuff. Yeah. You know that it's shrunk. You a could do little it. Bit. You, yeah, but there's enough. Uh, there's enough play around the edges. You would have to take it off, mm -hmm. lay it out, 
warm it up, like maybe um, lay it face down outside in the in the sun for a little while. Yeah. To get it kind of stretchy, so that you could. Uh, and they make a stuff that you could back this with, like you back this whole area, both sides. Yeah. You know, strip of the stuff, and uh, I think you could get it back together, and it would. Cool. I mean, you would see it, but it, it would it would be aesthetically. Yeah. Okay. Well, I still, you know, love how it looks, but yeah, no, I love how it sounds too. It's just... It's phenomenal.